Number 99. For each of the following pairs of ions, write the symbol for the formula of the compound they will form. And then I have A through E. So I'm just going to write down A, B, C. Then we'll do D and E down here. Okay. All right, so all we're going to do is we're going to take the individual ions and put them into their compounds. And we did a very similar exercise like this in the last one, but instead we were given the compound and we had to find the ions. So this is kind of backwards, I guess. So let's get to it. So for A, they're telling us that we need to make a compound between Ca2 plus and S2 minus. Now, just know that for all of these, if we scan them, these have all charges, right? There's always a positive and there's always a negative. So all of these represent ionic compounds. And there's one thing that you should know as far as ionic compounds. And let me just put this up here. Whoop. Let me just move this over here. Okay. The one thing that you have to know about ionic compounds is you will always simplify. So you'll simplify if you can, meaning that if you have subscripts that basically can be divisible by each other, you will do that. All right. So it will always be in the most simplified version. Covalent compounds do not do that. You do, you do not, and you will never simplify covalent compounds. But since for these, I have all positives and negatives that symbolizes that it's ionic compound. So we will simplify if we can. Now, how do we make a compound? It always comes from the oxidation states, AKA the charges. Calcium had a plus two charge and sulfur had a minus two charge. What you're always going to do for this, especially for all ionic compounds, is you're going to do the crisscross method. All right, and what the crisscross method states is that you will always take your charges and you crisscross them down and that will tell you how many of each atom you need to make your compound. So let's give it a shot. This two plus or plus two crisscrosses down telling me that I need two sulfurs in my compound and this negative two will crisscross down to tell me that I need two calciums. Now when I crisscross the negative and the positive both vanish. You only take the numbers, all right? And when you do that, technically, you get rid of the charges as well. So when you do that, these charges basically don't exist anymore. And now you just have the compound. Your compound's always gonna be neutral, but I'll keep them there for, for now. So what does that tell us? That means that I made a compound Ca2, there's two calciums, and there's S2, there's two sulfurs. Remember, these get canceled out when you make the charges. Now, let's see, I have two and two. Can I simplify that? Yeah, you always simplify by division, right? And for ionic compounds, you will always simplify. So what can I do? I can divide both of these by two. And when I do that, two divided by two is one and two divided by two is one. So here it would just be Ca1S1. And remember, whenever you have a one in your uh, formula, it's always an empirical formula. Remember, empirical formulas are always the simplest formulas. Now, do you have to write the ones? Absolutely not, you don't have to. So I can just get rid of those and it just becomes CAS. Box that answer off, that's the answer for A. So this compound would be CAS. B, we have NH4 plus coming in with SO4 2 minus. Now remember, whenever you see a plus, this signifies that it's a plus one. All the other numbers, they would have to tell you that. So let's do the crisscross method. Now I gave a chart here just to show you that sometimes you can actually make compounds from polyatomic ions. NH4 is really ammonium, as you can see, it's, it's right here, the charge and everything, it's all the same. And SO4, two minus, is sulfate, which is down here. So you can make compounds with polyatomic ions, but the same thing, the same rules apply. 
This plus one crisscrosses down to tell me that I need one whole sulfate. And the SO4, the four is included in your compound. This two, two minus crisscrosses down to tell me that I need two ammoniums. And ammonium is NH4. Now, here's the catch. If I just wrote NH4 2 SO4 1, that would be technically incorrect. Well, the first thing is, is that whenever we have one of something, we don't have to write it, so this one goes away. But now, you have to state that you have two of the whole entire polyatomic. We always do that with parentheses. So whenever you have two of an entire polyatomic, you have to use parentheses around the polyatomic. So there, the final answer is, it would be NH4, two, you have two ammoniums, which is NH4, and you have one sulfate, which is just SO4. Box your answer off, that's the answer for this part. So this would be NH4, two, SO4. So these two are done. C, we have Al3 plus coming together with Br minus. They didn't say specifically what number, so we assume that it's a minus one. This is just two different atoms, aluminum and bromine. Crisscross down, the three tells me that I need three bromines. The one tells me that I need one aluminum. So it would be Al1 Br3, no polyatomics here, so I don't have to worry about parentheses. You'll only have to worry about parentheses with polyatomics. And now I see, can I simplify? I have one and three. There's no other way of simplifying. So this would technically be the answer. The only thing that I would do is I would just clean this up by just saying, okay, there's really no one here. So this would be AlBr3. That's the compound that's formed for C. And technically this looks like it's spaced, but it should be close like that. All compounds are without spaces. Okay, last two. We have Na plus, and it's a plus one, with HPO4, two minus. Those are the two ions, and HPO4 is a polyatomic, so if we have multiple of them, we need to use parentheses. So let's see. This plus one, right, this plus one will crisscross down to tell me that I only need one of my polyatomic HPO4. And the negative two will crisscross down to tell me that I need two sodiums. Sodium isn't a polyatomic ion, so I don't need parentheses for that. So this would just be Na2 HPO4, and there's technically one of these, but if there's one, you don't need to specify the one so you can get rid of the parentheses. And that would be the compound for this one, Na2HPO4. Na2HPO4. And that's that. Last but not least, we got Mg2 plus coming together with PO4 3 minus. PO4 is a polyatomic, it's phosphate, it's over here, oh sorry, PO yeah, I did say PO4, I think, which is phosphate, PO4, 3 minus, you see how that's exactly the same, they're just taking it from your polyatomic chart. Now let's just find out what the compound is. This two crisscrosses down to tell me that I need two phosphates, right, two of the whole PO4, so what do you think we're going to need when we write that down? So we're going to need parentheses for that one. And then this three tells me that I have three magnesiums. Magnesium is in a polyatomic ion, so therefore we don't need parentheses for that. So it would just be Mg3, but now I have two of the PO4s. So parentheses, PO4, close parentheses, two. Three and two, I just make sure that this is simplified, and yes it is, you can't divide three and two, there's no number that's, you know, uh, divisible with them, so that's your final answer. And that would go for this one. So this would be Mg3, PO4, two. Check that off. And guys, that's the end for this one. This is a super important concept to know, so 
I'm very glad that they're starting it off in chapter three, but we're definitely going to pick it up, you know, and pick up the pace with chapter four. It's going to be there. So be ahead and memorize your common polyatomic ions. That will help you out greatly in all your quizzes and tests, um, and especially in chapter four. All right. So hopefully this helped. Let me know if it did. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you want, you can click the subscribe button, but if not, that's okay too. We'll still be putting out tons of content for you guys and tons of answers. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day.